Welcome to the Reconstructing Inclusion podcast. We're creating a space to speak truth and examine context in diversity, equity, and inclusion. That means creating a path forward for everyone to recognize the benefits of inclusion individually and collectively. I'm your host, Omri B. Johnson. I'm a Topeka, Kansas, USA-born, Switzerland-based epidemiologist playing the role of an inclusion, diversity, and equity practitioner for the past 20 years. I'm the author of Reconstructing Inclusion, Making DEI Accessible, Actionable, and Sustainable, and the CEO of the DEI-centered management consultancy, Inclusion Wins, creating culture from the hearts of individuals. Let's jump in. Welcome to our first episode of the Reconstructing Inclusion podcast. I want to share with you in this first inaugural episode at a high level what this podcast will be about. The Reconstructing Inclusion podcast will go far beyond the redundant foray into how-to DEI dialogues. There's quite a few of those that are accessible to us. However, this one will be more contrarian than conventional, more dissenting than agreeable, more mirror holding than window peering, more inclusion than representation, more systems than symptoms, more extraordinary than mundane. We aim to create a space to speak the truth and examine context in DEI. That means creating a path forward for everyone to rethink and recognize the benefits of inclusion individually and collectively. Reconstructing, in this sense, is about creating organizational systems and networks where everyone belongs. In such systems and networks, robust social capital is created, encouraging people to grow with one another when organizations and institutions are at ease, which is increasingly rare these days, and to expand individual and collective capacity and capabilities in much of the time when volatility, uncertainty, ambiguity, and complexity are at play, which is increasingly incessant. As I share topics and host conversations with various guests, I want to share a couple of definitions with you that I'll use quite a bit. The first one is diversity. Any mixture, of similar and different attributes and their respective tensions and complexities. Equity, vigilantly identifying where fairness, context, or access gaps exist, generatively learning and designing what's needed to close them. And inclusion, it's a verb. Actions that create the conditions for any mixture of similar and different attributes to thrive and for an organization to be generative. Inclusion is a relational construct, meaning that the conditions created via actions taken deepen individual and organizational capacity to better relate with all stakeholders. Any organizational practice, behavior, and systemic or structural change intended to help people become more open to sharing and willing to be influenced by people whose backgrounds are less familiar than their own connote practicing inclusion. Thrive, another definition, to flourish, progressing or realizing one's goals despite or due to temporary circumstances. And lastly, generative organizational cultures. Generative organizational cultures are positive and life-giving. They create and invent opportunities for others while creating value for themselves. They are highly cooperative, connected, and performance-oriented. Thriving and generative organizational cultures are the outcomes of an inclusion system which you can read about in Reconstructing Inclusion, Making Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Accessible, Actionable, and Sustainable, my book that I hope that if you haven't bought it, that you'll be purchasing it soon. Now, why should you tune in to and subscribe to this podcast? 
Many resources have emerged on DEI over the past two to three years. These include books, podcasts, social media influencers with massive reach, YouTube channels, substacks, etc. I found only a few that are targeted to go beyond their echo chambers. Echo chambers are not inherently bad or wrong. They're just exclusive. Only specific ideas and people get to enter. Most of the time, we let in that with which we are familiar. But unfortunately, it's a common trap for DEI practitioners. We too easily attach to particular ideas, compromising our ear for dissent. DEI practitioners and those I call skilled operators who work to make DEI normative in organizational life need to be refined beacons for dissenters. Our responsibility is to home in on the quietest or even silenced voices and the loudest resistance. Part of our reason for being is to understand the sentiments, contributions, and insights from all areas of organizations and society. This podcast is purpose to open up our apertures and learn how to zoom in and out of and on ideas that allow us to create the extraordinary in places and spaces where we invest considerable amounts of our time, organizations, institutions, and beyond. So if you are committed or simply a little bit curious about how to make DEI accessible to everyone, actionable, that is, unambiguously prioritized and sustainable, aligned with personal and organizational purpose, hit the subscribe button. We will publish monthly. Sometimes I'll share a response to a question, reflecting on a current trend. Other times I will explore ideas like why one person is considered an expat, like me, an American living in Switzerland, and others considered immigrants like Mexicans coming temporarily to the USA for work. And of course, I will bring on fascinating guests that will challenge and inspire your understanding and beliefs about what DEI is and can be. So join us, subscribe. Thanks for your time. I very much hope it was helpful. Make it a great day. Peace.